Well, we are so thankful, Randall Flynn and I, having the opportunity to host this event tonight. Um, we are a bit um, selfish in the endeavor because we get to reunite with a lot of wonderful friends around the world and also have this opportunity to connect with so many incredible um, new faces and new friends. And we know what this time is affording right now. It's for us to connect and for us to um, really you know, hone in, focus in on um, one another, caring for each other, serving each other, and being able to use a platform like this. So we want to thank you for participating and thank you already in advance for our um, professional speakers who are um, joining tonight. So thank you. So Randy, is there anything you want to say in um, introduction for this evening? Sure. I just want to thank everyone again, like you did, Cynthia, for participating in this um, I think it's so vital that at this time, as um, leaders and as co-workers in this area of the arts that we've been entrusted with, that we find ways that we can authentically encourage one another and we can learn from one another in this time and that where we may feel a little bit personally blocked as we ignite together, we can find ways of reviving and ways of even being more innovative as well. So thank you all for joining today. Well, Jarrell, we'd love to turn it over to you and hear your words of wisdom this evening. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. And thank you, Randy, and everybody else for being here tonight. I don't know if they're words of wisdom, but they are definitely going to be some words. Uh, first off, my name is Darrell Comedy, and I have been living in the Charlotte, North Carolina area for the last year. Prior to that, I was living in New York City, based in Brooklyn. I was a performer with, started with the Metropolitan Opera, did a lot of work with um, Troy Powell and Matthew Rushing before joining the Limon Dance Company for close to seven years. And then right after that, I joined Mark Morris Dance Group and was with them for about four years until uh, last March, last March was when my wife and my two daughters, we moved here to the Charlotte area. And um, can you all hear me? Yeah, we're good. Okay, great. And my wife and my two daughters moved to the Charlotte area. Um, kind of, we moved here for a ministry opportunity. And it came almost out of nowhere. I was working or volunteer as a singer with my church in Brooklyn. And God opened up a door for me to be able to be on staff with the music team at First Baptist Indian Trail. So I've been doing that for the last year, which means that dance is not my primary vocation anymore, which has been a incredible journey to say the least. And um, I'm actually speaking, the subject that I'm speaking on tonight is about being open for change and ready for transition. And that's been my life for the last 14 months. All I've known since I was six years old was dance and dance in the professional vernacular. Um, knew nothing about music, knew that I loved the Lord and loved worshiping him, but God recently placed a call on my life or at least on my heart to be a worship leader, not really knowing what that meant because I don't have musical training. I don't, I mean, I sing a little bit, and, uh, <laughs> but uh, just knowing that I was obsessed and addicted with creating a space and environment for people to engage in worship through music. And so God opened up this opportunity for me and I was very resistant at first because I felt like I had a lot of dancing years left. But, um, but it was very, very clear and very apparent to me that God was moving and God was speaking. He was taking me out of my comfort zone, taking me out of what was easy, what I knew so well, what I could just say with you know, with my eyes closed and both arms tied behind my back, I could talk about dance, dance history and dance and within choreography and all the other kind of stuff, but in music and within worship and with working at a church that I had no understanding of what that would require of me. And as I was thinking about tonight, I was thinking about the verse in Ecclesiastes, which a lot of us know, Ecclesiastes 3 says, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. And and while I have thoroughly enjoyed, hmm, let me rephrase that, while I have thoroughly had a, a great understanding of what it means to be in this ministry capacity, I have endured a lot of anxiety. I've endured a lot of frustration. And, um, and while I said, yes, our Lord, I'm open to obeying you, I don't think I was open to what that looked like. And had I been in a comfortable place like I was before, 
I, I, I don't know if I really would have had the full capacity of knowing what it meant to be in this ministry uh, as space that I've been in. And so he stretched me, They're removing me from the thing that I held dear, from the dream that I thought had for years and years and years to be in New York and to be a professional dancer. I'm in a position where I know nothing, where I feel alone, where I feel like an alien, where I feel like I am not like anybody else in many ways, you know, not just the obvious ways, but I'm not like anyone in my church. I'm not like anyone on staff. And yet, knowing that God put me in this place it was something that I could not reconcile. I could not um, fully submit to. It's because I wasn't open and I wasn't s sensitive or surrendered to the fact that this was a season. And however long that season was supposed to last, I was to trust God in that season. And that like seasons change, there is an end, just like we're in a season where it seems like, oh, it will never end. They keep telling us, oh, you can't, you can only gather with a hundred or less and now 50 and now 10 and now stay in your house. It just seems like it's getting worse and worse and worse and more confining and more restrictive. And it feels like we can't do anything, but yet it's a season and like all seasons they end and there will be another one. And it's learning this, this last year has been uh, an opportunity for me to learn how to trust the Lord in a new way, how to be creative within the restrictions that I'm in, that we're all in. I have, in, in this place where I feel like I am, where I can't go anywhere or do anything, I feel the most freedom now because it's allowing me to re truly remove every type of barrier or thing that I've put all of my hope and all of my confidence in. It's causing me now to say, okay, God, what are the other possibilities? What else? Oh, now, you know, that people are becoming so creative and innovative with allow, you know, with this digital dance series, I'm sure some of you are following, that has like warmed my heart to see that there are online classes for people who are like shut in. And just to me seeing all of that, and then now God using other people in those realms, he's now reminding me, now remember those dreams that I had put in your heart, those visions, those pieces, those, you fill in the blank, you have the opportunity now to be able to explore that and to surrender it to me and to not place a huge amount of um, expectations because I think that's what gets us frustrated in seasons um, of change is that we have an expectation that it's going to look like one thing and then it ends up looking like something different. And so the expectation should always be whether you are a believer in Christ or not, but I think the expectation is always to expect the unexpected and to be as flexible and as open-handed as possible. That way, you know, you're, you're willing to be able to go through any type of season and navigate through any type of pathway and it not feel like, oh, this is frustrating. Oh, and that's my timer telling me to shut up. So <laughs> anyway, all that said is I, I pray that um, and my heart's desire is that whatever season that you're in personally, we're all in this season of kind of like waiting on what on earth is about to happen, what isn't happening, Th to, to find the way that you can just kind of, a lot of us are feeling like this. And when you get like that, there's a lot of tension and there's no way for you to fully rest and release. So once we find that ability to or ask God or ask the Lord to give us the ability to just be open-handed and to be released. I promise you, I guarantee you that there will be visions, there will be opportunities and things that will come out that you had no clue were, um, were available, were possible. Uh, that's my encouragement about, you know, being in new seasons and being ready for change and being open for transition. So I hope that was of encouragement to someone one of you. Um, I'm going to pass the baton to my sister, Charmaine. Is that is that how you pronounce it? Yes, Charmaine Hunter. Yes, she's going to be coming up and sharing with us. So I'm so excited that she's going to be able to share. Thank you guys for your time and your attentiveness or unattentiveness, inattentiveness. It's all good. We're here together. I appreciate all of you so much. Hi, everybody. Listen, Darrell, that was fab. Oh, my God. Okay, so Hi, Steve. Oh, okay. So my topic was going to be on um, kindness in the days of, in the current days of the days of the pandemic. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. All right. Um, number one, the first 
I've noticed just, this is just, uh, thank you God for allowing me to speak today. I didn't get to speak earlier, but thank you Jesus for that. Um, I've noticed the kindness just in our everyday life, even if it's a simple email, someone or, or a text message calling saying, uh, hey, how are you doing? And this is somebody I haven't spoken to in 20 years. Or, you know, a, a Facebook message or a comment, everything. Everybody just kind of now checking in with each other. Is there something that you need? So this past weekend, my mom and I went to the supermarket. This is just a, you know, um, what I've noticed has happened. Uh, this past weekend, we went to the supermarket. We couldn't find toilet paper, of course, you know, because everybody's been hoarding it. <clears throat> and... We we're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Because we're like on our last roll. What do you do, right? Okay, so we're going around. We've been to at least four supermarkets. We're not supposed to be around. We have our masks and everything. A lot of people are not, we're not wearing the masks, but they are now. Um, and so <clears throat> we ran into a neighbor. Well, at least I didn't know him. My mom knew him. And I said, do I know you? And he was like, well, yeah, I live across the street. And he goes, oh, I see you all the time. You, you're really busy. And I said, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. Um, he, and he asked me what I did for a living, blah, blah, blah. At any rate, 15 minutes later, we told him that we were, you know, we needed some toilet paper, we're still looking. If, and he goes, well, if I find some, I'll bring them by. And I said, if we find some, we'll bring you some. Um, we ran into three other neighbors, same situation. Well, my mom and I ended up coming back home. And... Um, Five minutes later, our doorbell's ringing and all four neighbors brought, you know, rolls of toilet paper. So we've got enough for everybody. So if you need <laughs> any, <laughs> if you need it, we've got a lot. Let me tell you something. We were on our last roll. And I thought, oh man, if that's not God, so many things happen. And I know that when I say this, my friends look at me like, girl, really? And I'm like, you know what? We are on two different paths, but that's okay. That's on you because I'm happy. Um, there are several things and, and instances where people are willing to help others. And, and it's on the news, you know, as much as we hate to watch it, we do for the information that we need. But I am just so blessed in uh, here being in Orlando with, I didn't go to go back to, uh, I'm with Orlando Ballet. I'm the director of enrichment. And basically, we, I start different programs around our community. Um, and we provide dance opportunities for those who would normally not have access to it. And when I tell you that we have a large community that would not have access, uh, large is not the word. It, it, it is unlimited how many people have no internet, no, they have nothing. So when we come in and we're like, you know, do you want to dance? No, I don't want to do that. And then, you know, after like the class, towards the end of the class, everybody is up, everybody is taking part and they all want to know more. So that's the joy of, of what it is that I'm doing. Did I expect to be doing this? No, not at all. I didn't expect to even to be in this business after, let's see, 1972. And here we are, I don't know, years later, do the math. I didn't expect to be doing this still. And I, at first I tried to get out of the dance world and go into something else um, in preparing for a time like this where now we can't gather. So how do we continue what it is that we do? This is the thing that stressed me out. It caused so much anxiety, I almost made myself ill. I was like to the point where I don't know if I could do this podcast today. I felt like, wait a minute, do I have the corona? You know, but you know, I thought, okay, Charmaine, you need to calm down because the word gives you the answer for what it is that we're going through right now. I remember going through something very similar like this. And I spoke to Steve, we were at a, a, a festival, a music festival, and there was some dance. And he talked to me, he talked me off the ledge for what, an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I tell you, he has the golden tongue. I felt like I was being washed by, by God himself. And it was so simple. 
it was just that I feel, I feel like we're in a very similar time, like what I was going through then. And so just the simple fact that Cynthia invited me to this where I would normally not be in this arena, which is where we are now. And Zoom, this is my third Zoom meeting, by the way. So now this is the way. Just the fact that Cynthia invited me, we're in this room together. I'm meeting, uh, not just Cynthia, I see other, other people that I know here, Jin and Kim Lee. Yeah, many of you. Um, just this, this right here is the kindness that I'm talking about. And I know that there, there are gonna be answers that I need. There are gonna be uh, answers to questions that I need that I can't really voice now. I, I just know that it's gonna come because knowing that this meeting is happening has already taken the major anxiety that I've been going through this whole three weeks. This is not fun. This is not fun because our livelihoods are threatened. We have to be so creative and um, come up with other ways in order. I'm not going to say relevant because we are relevant, but to stay alive because uh, Darrell spoke and said, this is what he knows. Well, this is what I know. Um, dance is what I know. And I'm sure a lot of us, the arts, if it's not acting, singing, dancing, something, it's entertainment in all its forms. That's what we know. And that's being threatened right now. Companies are having to close. It, the list goes on and on. So what is our next step? And I, I know the answer is there. I can't see it. I, 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 not right now. Maybe it's not for me to see right now. Um, Steve would normally talk me off the ledge. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. I think that's all I want to say. I just experienced so much kindness. I, thank you, Cynthia, for this invitation, and I wanted to share with you my, my concerns, and I know that there's so much more that we could be worried about, but for right now, this is where I am. Can thank I chime you. In? Yes, Aisha. How are you today? My name is Aisha Marable, um, ordained clergy, founder of the National Church of Dance Network, but also a director of community engagement at one of the largest um, uh, performing arts centers in New Jersey, in, in JPAC. And, oh, yes! <laughs> and I am uh, in the conversations at the table, uh, and I must tell you, be encouraged, because with this type of calamity, um, there's always funding that follows. And so I'm on one panel with uh, Senator Menendez, where we're finding uh, funding for churches. And uh, First Lady Governor, um, uh, Governor Murphy's wife has a pool of money for people who don't have 501c3s, but need finances just to keep their doors open. And the State Arts Council in New Jersey, which I'm sure they're taking the lead from New York City, um, has a state funding opportunity for artists. So I was just asked this past week to ask um, artists to fill out surveys. What are you in need of? And the teaching artists that are connected to New Jersey Performing Arts Center, I sent it to them. But if Cynthia allows, I can also send it to you nationwide. And if you uh, would like to fill it out, maybe they can help you find funding that's happening in your city. Uh, but they're definitely rolling out governmental funds for the artists, they have you in mind. They have us in mind, yes? So be encouraged. Good, thank you so much, yes. Excellent, thank you so much, Aisha. We greatly appreciate that. Um, and we're gonna hear next from Misty, but just one thing that you said, Charmaine, was um, that you know that it's going to work out, but you don't know how to articulate it, and that's called faith. You know, it's just this trusting and believing, and it is beyond ourselves. And we can't figure it out right now. And that puts us in this place of humanity and God being God. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for that and being real and, um, you know, being authentic because there's many of us in that place in different areas of our life. Right. And the rest of you, thank you again for joining us and just make sure um, that you're staying muted. And then um, also towards the end, we're going to do a question and answer time. So we'll be able to share um, from our panelists, but also from others who have some words of encouragement. Um, so, um, Misty, we'd love to invite you now to share in this conversation. 
Hey, hello everybody from Wisconsin. I'm pleased to meet you. I feel like I'm in that verse about the cloud of witnesses. I'm like, oh my gosh, here they are right here. I'm in a Zoom cloud. I'm like in the cloud in Zoom with the cloud of witnesses. Who knew that's what it might have meant back in the day, right? And I've made three location changes since I hopped on here. I have five kids at home. So the, you know, my husband and the five decided they were going to have hot dog bar while I was trying to do this call. So I've, I've now ended up in the garage tried three locations. So I hope this is all right with you, Cynthia. And <laughs> it's live theater, right? We're figuring it out. So my, my background is I'm just so excited to see all you on here. I was an, I was an almost daily dancer. I don't have a great background like the rest of you. I got into the training school and then God told me to open a dance school. So I decided to let the classroom be my stage. Open a dance school 23 years later. Uh, we just built an amazing new facility. We have 900 kids. And I also, eight years ago, started an association of dance schools. One of our owners is on here, Bethany, I see you. Uh, so glad you're here. And so we have 300 affiliated schools. So we basically package up all our systems and programs and curriculum and advice and business management. And we, we provide guidance for those 300 schools. So those 300 schools serve about 120,000 kids a week. So when this thing came down, I had all the pressures of managing my school and providing support for these 300 schools and uh, a couple of things that I want to share with you that came out of that journey. So, so one, we've kind of talked with our affiliated schools about how this journey is almost like going through a cereal bowl, right? So we came sliding down this side when everything got tighter and harder and we're, we're about, I feel like, to get to the bend of the cereal bowl and then we're going to go into this kind of long journey of indefinite time where we don't know um, really when it will end, but things aren't necessarily getting better. They're not necessarily getting worse. It's just kind of a new normal, right? I think there's lots of periods of time in, in the Bible where maybe it seems like God is silent and you're just in the bottom of the cereal bowl, right? Like there's lots of um, stories and characters and prophets and from the Bible where it's like they spent a good deal of their ministry in the bottom of the cereal bowl. It wasn't as if God wasn't there and we know he's there with us, but we just don't know how long it's going to last and when are we going to come up, come up this recovery side. So I was uh, walking the other day and listening to a podcast that came out of Bethel and really cool language I wanted to share with you guys. So it talked about how in Greek there were two words for time. So you and I might say, hey, the time of this call for me was six o'clock central and I had a great time on this call tonight, right? But those in English, we have one word for that time and time. The Greeks had chronos and kairos. So chronos is the what time was the call at six in kairos was like, how did it feel? What was the experience? And that is, that's how I felt about this. So really basically what happened and as I relate this to dance is we were all living our chronos life, right? So we had, you know, the calendar and we did what we needed to do today to have a better tomorrow, to get the kids at the end of the week, to get the paycheck at the end of the month, to get the funding for next year's season. We were living this, this Kronos calendar and boom, this Kairos moment drops in of the coronavirus and it basically pushes down that Kronos calendar. So what we're experiencing now with our, with our 300 affiliated schools, and I am sure this will to a certain degree resonate with everybody, is you know, we were doing this, doing our life, you know, hopefully doing our life, you know, in faith and pursuing God's purposes. Boom, this comes down and it pushes down that Kronos calendar for a time, right? But what's going to happen, I believe, is that we're going to be still dealing with this Kairos moment and the needs of the Kronos calendar are going to come up and start butting against the fact that we're not out of the bottom of the cereal bowl. Does that make sense? If anybody wants to like thumb up or nod their head, like the needs of this, the demand of this, that whether that's the tuition that needed to be paid on the first of the month from our affiliated studios, students or the rent or the teachers or the payroll or the federal funds or the applications, like this is going to come up and start provide, um, creating friction against the fact that we're not out of the cereal bowl. We're not out of this Kairos moment. And I think that is the, truly the actual opportunity for the people of God to step up and provide encouragement. I think everybody, you know, like they, they start considering maybe like, where's God in this? What does he have to say? Is there a God? What's going on? Maybe I should pray nation on its knees as we're sliding down the cereal bowl. But where we're going to need to show up and show off and shine out is actually going to be in the bottom of the cereal bowl when this calendar need starts to create friction with the fact that we're not out of the moment. 
So a verse that I've been thinking about a lot is uh, uh, Paul's letter to the Colossians. And I love reading about Paul because, you know, I don't know, you've just, I don't know why I get encouragement about other people's messes. Hopefully I'm not the only one, but seeing other people go through mess and get out is me like, oh my gosh, well then there's hope for me in my mess that I can get out of my mess. So I love reading uh, Paul's words, right? And he says in his letter, message version to the Colossians, he says this, I pray that you have the strength to stick it out through the long haul. Just pause on that, right? Not the strength to like grab a knee when we're sliding down or throw up a, you know, a verse or say it's going to be okay. But I'm talking about this strength, the strength in the bottom of the cereal bowl when we don't know how long it's going to be and the needs of the calendar start buttoning up against the situation at hand. I pray that you have the strength to make it through the long haul. Not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, which is everything that happens as we slide down here, right? The grim strength of gritting your teeth is like, oh my gosh, hang on, adapt to the new situation. Or as, um, I, I don't know if it was Darrell or Charmaine said like, oh, 100 people, 50 people, 20 people, like hang on, hang on, hang on. That's all grim strength of gritting your teeth, figuring it out. So not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength that God gives, which is strength to endure the unendurable. And it goes on to say, spill over into joy and everything bright and beautiful that God has for you. So it's from the first chapter of Colossians, I think verse nine message version. So I just wanted to give you guys encouragement as we kind of cross what I feel like is the bend of the bowl. And we get into this kind of like indefinite time of this new normal, like lean in to that strength, not your own strength, but the glory strength that God says to, gives to endure the unendurable and spill over into joy. And I love that spillover piece. Like, let him fill the cereal bowl, so to speak, right? Let him fill this up so we can spill over and be a blessing to others. So we can slide back up the other side of recovery. And I wanted to close by just uh, offering this other verse. So also from the message from the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter five, you know, I was one when I first started getting into the word, word into my late teens and I'd first been saved, you know, I would read the Beatitudes. I'm like, what, what does this mean? Like you're, you when you're strong, when you're weak, you're strong. And when you're destroyed, you have victory. I mean, all of these contrasts, right? Then I read this in the message. I had just been married, had my first kids, started my studio and everything was just a hard, hot mess every day of the week. And I read this, I'm like, this I get. In the message it said, blessed are you when you're at the end of your rope because there's more room for God and less room for you. And I just love a good, <laughs> practical, solid, plain speaking, modern language word that meets me in the bottom of the cereal bowl, which at, which at that time was new baby, new marriage, new business, new faith, all of that. So I would say in those times, well, Lord, I must be the most blessed person of all. I ain't even on the rope. I'm not even on the rope. Well, if you feel like you're not even on the rope, the good news is, is that there's a lot more room for God and less room for you. So hang on to that glory strength. We can rise together. Let him fill the bowl so we can get out on the other side. Thanks, Cynthia. Am I supposed to give it to somebody? It's all right. Cheryl. Cheryl's, Cheryl is on. It's okay. Cheryl. Hey, you guys. Hey, it's Cheryl. Can you guys great. hear me? Okay. Awesome. Wow, Misty, thank you so much. And everybody who's spoken so far, it's such a, so great to see everybody. Um, my name is Cheryl Cutlip, and uh, I'm originally from North Carolina, where Darrell now lives. I'm so excited to have another friend in the state of North Carolina. And um, after many journeys around the world and back, um, I live in North Carolina once again, and with my husband and my two kids here in the mountains of North Carolina. And about 20 years ago, um, Project Dance started. It was birthed, um, honestly, through um, just the vision, really, to see dancers come together and to sort of grapple with how dance and fate not only connect, but also how they interact with the world around us, whether it's in the, um, just like the regular dance world, like marketplace dance world, um, or the, the sacred dance arena as well. And um, many of the dear friends who started that project with me are on this call, Steve Brooks, Cynthia, Randy, Bethany, um, just, you know, really being there from the beginning years of seeing um, God really birth something. And what is really kind of 
um, struck me in this season is that when I think about how Project Dance started, um, it was really out of a time very similar to what we're going through. And um, there was this emergence of dancers who wanted to really unite together after the events of um, September 11th in New York City and to really um, just press into um, the public arena what the power and the strength of dance had to bring healing and to bring hope and to bring encouragement. Um, and it was really done as an overflow of what was already happening in the lives of these dancers. Um, I know for myself, I was dancing at that time um, at Radio City as a rockette. I know that um, many of the dancers who were at least a part of that first year in New York City were uh, working dancers. And so this expression really in Times Square was um, was out of the overflow of what was already happening. It was out of this incredible generosity of spirit that dancers had to to give more than what they normally were giving. And um, I think about the generosity of the people who helped birth Project Dance. And I have to give Randy kudos because, you know, back in the day when he was doing art reach and he was bringing dancers together, um, we we were we were all babies and and you know we really had we were we were just like so hungry for what randy was offering in his week-long summer intensive and i know for many of you here that have experienced that it, it was it was a pivotal week in many of our lives and, and many deep friendships were formed there and randy was was the person who kept hearing me every year i was like there's something i'm supposed to be doing i feel like i need to go to seminary um you know there was all these pieces and Randy just kept encouraging, we'll, we'll keep, keep praying, you know, and we'll be there to cheer you on. And out of that encouragement and out of that generosity was birth project dance. And, you know, I think about how Randy and others who had gone before me, they, they didn't have to do that. You know, they, they really didn't have to give me everything they had learned over the years to, to walk me through this vision that I felt God was birthing inside of me, but they did. And because they did that, because of that generosity, um, Project Dance has, has sustained itself now for like almost 20 years with the same friendships, with the same like-minded vision that many of you have. And so what I want to encourage you guys today that we are in that time again where there's going to be an overflow of generous hearts that come birthing out of young people out of this time. And there's going to be a birthing and a springing forth of new visions that are digitally technically savvy there's going to be things there's going to be people knocking on your door and they're going to be saying i've got to do this and i've got a vision what i want to encourage you today is to wrap your arms around that young person give them every story give them every resource tell them everything you've learned tell them the good stories the bad stories the you know there's a lot of fun ones, but then if you know you've been there for a while, you have a lot of hardship stories that you've walked through and you've come out the other side. And what's beautiful about it is that even though the world is shaking, once again, there's a shaking going on and we're shaking too, because you're right, Charmaine, we don't know what's gonna happen. We, we can get through, right? Like Missy said, we, we're gonna be able to get through this season but we don't know what August is going to look like. We don't know what enrollment will look like. We don't know which families are gonna be able to come back to dance, right? But God is not shaken and we can stand on his promises that are true when we are completely out of our minds, right? We have no idea what the answers are, but we do have the answers. And like you said, it's in the word of God. And what I wanna encourage us as a, as a people group, as dancers, there has been an incredible amount of generosity coming out of the dance world, whether it's the Rockettes giving free classes, Alvin Ailey giving free classes. Oh, I'm 30, 39 seconds over. Give me just a couple more minutes. Um, it didn't beep on me. There's been an enormous amount of generosity coming out of the dance world. And because of that, God sees that common good effort of generosity pushing out into the world freely. And that is a birthing ground for kingdom, for the kingdom of God to work through the dance world. And so I just want to encourage you to jump on the generosity train, whatever you can do. If someone asks you to give a Zoom class and you've already given 27 this week, 
say yes. Just say yes. Because what they're asking is that they need your help. They, I've had quite a few friends that are dance teachers have reached out to me to say, have you recorded any classes? Why? Not because my classes are great, but because they need resources. And honestly, teaching on Zoom is so stressful. But, um, but just say yes and be some, be, let's be the people because what's happening is, is when this surge comes up and this harvest comes up and all eyes are on us, all eyes are on the faithful, then we want to show ourselves good stewards and generous hearted. All right. So God bless you guys. And I know I went a little bit over, but, um, but blessings to you in this season. And the scripture that I want to leave with you is Psalms 103.8. It says, the Lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger and abounding in love. All right, God bless you guys. Thank you, Cheryl, so much. And Kevin, we're excited to hear from you. And I just don't want us to feel the pressure of time. We're trying to get a lot of information in. And um, so just, we're gonna keep being gracious with one another and we're gonna keep saying yes. And we're gonna keep um, open to how long it takes for everybody to relay what's on their heart and what um, I feel like they want to impart and ways to encourage and inspire us. So Cheryl, thank you for that and everybody else that it's gone so far. So Kevin, we're looking forward to hearing from you, our friend. Thank you, Cynthia. And thank you, Cheryl. That was, um, that was amazing. And it was also, uh, it was perfect because uh, what I felt led to talk about today is the idea of giving. And uh, I'll give a quick, quick backstory on myself because it kind of leads into it. Um, I've been choreographing for a long time. Um, and like many choreographers, I always had the side job. I would always teach. And um, let's see, about three years ago, I was teaching for Boston Ballet School. And I was getting more opportunities to choreograph. And I really felt like I needed to take that leap of faith. And um, it was, I think, the year before Forbes magazine had listed choreographer as the number one most competitive job in the world, which is not a super encouraging thing when you're trying to dive out there. Um, and I decided to just throw all my eggs in that basket. I said, Lord, I'm just going to take the leap of faith and I'm going to, I'm going to let go of the steady income that teaching has given me. Um, and I'm going to throw myself on trusting you and trusting you for my income because um, I had this realization that if I truly believe, and I do, that God controls the world, um, the best place I can be is where he wants me to be, regardless of how risky that is in sort of the normal eyes of everyone else, right? Um, that's actually the safest place I can be. And so since then, I've had the I've choreographed for State Street Ballet, St. Louis Ballet, Island Moving Company, Dimensions Dance Theater. I've literally been on the road nonstop for the last uh, three or four years, and it's been incredible and exhausting. And um, and the thing that I learned is that is that the, the faith is just everything that will get you through. Um, and what I wanted to talk about today specifically is actually about faith, about finances, because I don't know about you, but I think that's what everyone right now is freaking out about, right? We are freaking out about, about toilet paper is the immediate thing we freak out about, right? Um, but we're not worried about that beyond this week. We're worried about, we're worried about June. We're worried about August. We're worried about, you know, so many of us have lost huge amounts of money from being um, laid off early, you know, from I had... I think three different separate commissions that got canceled, you know, and that was a hit that I don't, you know, I don't know how to handle that. Um, and early on, I'm, I'm incredibly blessed that my, my family raised me, um, you know, with great Bible teaching and um, my, they taught me the, the, the only way to survive financially is tithing is you have to, you have to get in this way of giving back to God. For those of you who don't, aren't familiar with the term tithing, it's the idea of giving back 10% of what we make to God, to the church, to whatever he leads you to give it to. Um, and uh, there's a great saying that I was talking to someone recently, they said, often the last thing to get saved is our wallet, right? I will, I will put my hand up in church and I will, I will sing along and I will say that, yes, Lord, I will follow you until he asks for money. Uh, and it's a weird, I, I even questioned, I felt like I should talk about this, but I'm like, this is a weird thing to ask people who are, we're all like locked in our homes, not making money. It's a weird thing to talk about tithing. But, um, but there's this great verse in Malachi um, and the Lord is talking about how far his people have gotten away from him. 
And I'm, I'm going to kind of read sections of it because it's a very long passage. But the Lord says, return to me and I will return to you. But you said, in what way shall we return? And this is how God says, this is how you return to me. This is how I bless you. He said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me in this, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I like, I like that he says, try me in this, um, because right in the New Testament, there are parts where God says, you shall not test the Lord your God, right? When he's being tested, he specifically says that this is the only time I've been able to find in the Bible where he specifically says that you can test me in this. Try me in this. Bring your tithe to me. Put me first. Put me first. And I will open, I love that, that phrase, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it. And he doesn't say that when he's like, okay, well, you've got enough. I mean, uh, the last three years have been an incredible experience of faith on a regular basis. The ironic thing is that the idea of the uncertainty of the next few months for me is actually, this feels like par for the course for me um, because I often don't know what's gonna happen next month. I often don't know what's gonna happen two months from now. Uh, and so I wanted to share this, this great story um, from a few years ago um, because I'm, I'm a type A person. I like to know what's happening and where things are going. And God just yanks that away from me on a regular basis, which is great. Um, and I was, uh, I think it was 2018. And I had this, uh, I was, I was, um, I was, um, there was, I was talking to this one university and they were playing, they were like, we really want to bring you in. I was like, great. I don't have anything going on in April. I really need something for April, um, financially, but also I'm just going to get bored, blah, blah, blah. Last second, it, it completely falls through. And so I'm looking at a month without income, um, being on the road, I also don't have housing and thank God I have family. So I'm like, okay, well I can go stay with family, but I have bills. I don't you know, have an insignificant amount of bills. And I think a week before April started, I get this call and this company said, hey, we just had two choreographers drop out of this program. Can you come to Dallas next week? And I was like, okay, yes, I can, I, absolutely, I will, whatever you can pay me, $5, don't care. I will be there. Um, and, uh, and they, they made me a very generous offer. It was enough to, to kind of get through the month and I get there and I was just so grateful for this experience. And while I was there, I got a message back from the IRS. They say, we were missing this one form. You're almost done with your taxes, but this one form didn't come through and it freaked me out because anything money related with the government freaks me out. But I stepped forward in faith and I filled it out. It took me like two evenings on rehearsing during the day, filling stuff out. And we get to the end and the government's like, oh, I'm glad you filled that out because we actually owe you $2,000 more than we thought we did. And so I go from this place where three weeks ago, I have no clue where income's coming from. I have no idea. Uh, and three weeks later, I, it, it was just surreal. It was incredibly surreal. And I chose that one because that's a really fun one, but I can't tell you how many times that happens. And so it's, it's a privilege to, to take this 10% of whatever I make that month. And I'm like, okay, sometimes I'm going to give it to missions. Sometimes I'm going to give it to the church. Sometimes I'm whatever God leads me to give it to. Uh, Cause I I'm traveling, I don't have a home church to support. Um, it, you just can't go wrong. It feels so counterintuitive to give away money when all of us are freaking out about money, but it puts the responsibility on God. He has to look after us because we no longer are the source of our own income. So I just can't encourage you enough to do that. And uh, like, and it, like Cheryl put it so well is, is don't turn inward, give like, like turn instead of saying, I don't have enough. I'm going to hoard my energy, my finances, my toilet paper, turn it around and just give everything away. God, will, you, will not, you will not lack. People will show up at your house with toilet paper, like Charmaine said. So um, so can I encourage you enough to do that? So um, thank you guys all for being here. Um, it's, it's so encouraging for me to see everyone. Um, and I'm going to pass this off to Keely now. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, my name is Keely Kalkimode. I am originally from Dallas, Texas, but um, I live in Los Angeles. I've been here for about 22 years now. My voice is shaky because my heart is pounding because I'm like, okay, God, tell me what order to say all this because he's like talking to me as I'm going. <laughs> and it has a lot to do with what, like sort of like Kevin's um, testimonies. I have a lot of testimonies of how God has come through. But um, 
let me just start by saying, I'm just trying to piece this together, but who is it that created the world? It was the word, right? So at the beginning of creation, God created a redemptive plan for us before we were even birthed into the planet, right? So speaking on this particular situation that we're in, we have a redeemer. He is a redeemer. He is a savior. That's just the nature of who he is. So, I mean, I was like, God, what do I, what do I speak? Because I have so many um, things to say about his nature and who he is and how he's come through for me. But um, a couple of the things that he's highlighting for me is um, just that this year, I'm trying to bring this up on my phone. Um, this year is literally considered the year of the mouth. 2020 is considered the year of the mouth. Um, I'm just going to read this to you. It says, we have entered a new decade on two different calendars, the Hebraic and the Gregorian. It is the year 5780 on the Hebraic calendar and the year 2020 on the Gregorian uh, calendar. The word fe in Hebrew carries a value of 80 and translates into mouth. Fe is the 17th letter of the Hebrew, Hebrew alphabet and symbolizes victory. So as we enter this new decade, we realize more than ever that the victory is actually generated what, from what comes out of our mouth. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's the year of the mouth, 2020, right? So we, what God has shown me is, is like we procreate with him. So, I mean, we're under so much pressure right now in so many ways. There's people who are sick. I have two friends in ICU right now um, with COVID. And so it's real, it's real, but let me kind of backtrack to um, something and Shana's on the phone and she, on the meeting, she's heard this already, but um, started in January of last year, God really put it on my heart to start proclaiming, I am this, I am that over myself. And God's name is I am. So tying the two things together, I am, healthy. I am renewed. I am disease free. I've battled with an autoimmune for the last 20 years and I had a, a really rough 2016 to 2018. So um, in January, he had me really understand the science behind speaking life, the, uh, the science behind there's power of life or death in the tongue. There's actually science behind that. Science can't exist without God. So I was like getting a deeper revelation on this. And so I started declaring these things and I felt a breakthrough within a matter of weeks in my body. Now, I had almost been bedridden for six months, which a lot of people don't know. I know Cheryl's seen some posts um, and stuff. So uh, I felt a shift, a major shift. And then I had a physical altercation where I braid hair on the side and I had a woman come in. This is a whole nother story. Um, and she actually physically assaulted me in March. So this was March 17th, St. Patrick's day of last year in front of my children, in front of her children. I was in a fetal position being kicked and punched over and over. My neighbor had to get her off of me. It was a really crazy long story. If anyone wants to know it, you can contact me on the side, but um, I had felt this major breakthrough, and then all of a sudden, I was confronted with something really demonic. Like, she had me read Psalms 91 to her right before she attacked me. It was really weird. So, um, so I had just felt a paradigm shift in my body from the declaration, and I went completely backwards because my adrenal glands were shot after the attack, so I had to start over. So I would say because of the ground I had gained and the education I had in health, that I could pick it up faster than usual. So I decided, okay, I need to get back to my declarations. So in September of 2019, I sat, my husband was working in and out of the country and I would just spend time with the Lord. And I, I literally said, in the, around the mid, middle of September, I was like, you know what? I need, a, I need a commercial because I need that residual income because I don't know if y'all know, but you can't even buy a gutter house in LA for like less than 550,000. <laughs> like you have to literally redo the whole thing and it's like a piece of junk. So um, I was like, man, I need some major breakthrough to actually be a homeowner in this city. So, um, and I was like, I've always wanted to do commercials. I used to book a lot of them. 
And I hadn't because I'd gone through so much physical stuff in the last few years that I was really just taking the time to heal. So um, finally, I said in September, I'm booking three national commercials before the end of the year. And I knew I would have September, October, November, December to do that. Three. Uh, and I was like, I need it. And it was this shift in my thinking of what I deserve as a child of God. Like really being able to actually receive that kind of blessing. So um, within two weeks, I'm in the audition for Walmart. And then within two weeks after that, or actually a week after that, I'm in the callback. I have a major, major Hashimoto's, if you know what that is, it's an autoimmune condition, a major flare where I am so swollen, I'm short of breath, and it was because of, I was drinking this vitamin drink, that's another story, but it caused me to flare, so I couldn't breathe, I was real swollen, um, you wouldn't have recognized me on a before and after picture, so I called out to friends and I said, please pray for me, I've been declaring I'm going to get these commercials, and now I'm in a callback today, but I really feel like I can't even dance for like a minute without passing out. That's how weak I felt. But when I walked out toward to go to the audition, I was like, no, I'm, I'm capturing this. And I know that God is going to use every single bit of what I'm dealing with right now to get, you know, he's going to use it. It's not going to be a problem. So within two weeks after that, I'm on set for that commercial. So I booked it. So there's one, right? So I'm like, I'm here, I'm here. And I'm like on set. And all I can do is just praise God. Cause I'm like, this is totally God. But that one commercial turned into six commercials. So I had six commercials running at the same time, not just three. I had six. And if you guys understand that, that's a big deal in the world of residual income. So we did not get any of that until January. Now, to be an open book, I have never in my life had a savings. I've been one of those struggling dancers <laughs> like that goes from week to week. Uh, literally week to week, month to month, trying to figure it out. But I just keep going. And God, I look back over my life. I'm like, God has always provided. He did it somehow. And I, uh, and if you know me and my husband, we work hard. We just haven't made a lot of money. You just have to know our story. But so in my life, in my 22 year of 22 years of being a professional dancer, I've never had a savings. So here we are. January hits. I'm getting, you know, my residuals. All of a sudden, I have a savings which I've never had, and somebody told me not to touch it, keep it there, and then this hit. And so I was like, looking back on it, I was like, oh my gosh, because by now, literally just keeping it real, I would already, we've already gone through our checking. We've had to go into that to pay rent, and now we're going to have to use it for, you know, the car note and groceries and all that stuff. So it's not the testimony in itself, it's the principle behind the testimony is that what God is um, wanting me to share with you is that it doesn't matter what the circumstances look like. He has done this for me. Every single big job that I've ever booked has been when either I'm flaring or I don't feel good or I'm not feeling as though I'm in the position to actually book something is when I actually book all these jobs. So he shows me that it's it's not, it's really his intervention. It's his favor it's his power and his ability it's nothing that I lack um, or that so I think what I'm trying to say is in this particular situation if you're having a hard time go back to all the times that God has intervened in your life when he has overstepped boundaries when he is his open doors for you count all of those times and apply those to now because what I believe is that there is no circumstance on this planet that can stop him from blessing you there's not one thing that you cannot do in this particular situation or after. There's nothing. Like, and what you focus on becomes a reality. So if you're focusing on, which I've been stuck in the news the last week, and I was feeling frustrated and irritated. And some of my posts were like not so positive because I was coming out of that news place. And I was like, no, you know what? No, no, because what I'm frustrated about, God can fix. I don't need to waste time worrying about this stuff. I need to rely on the power of God and my faith and my belief. And the other thing is, yes, we should be praying, 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 but I feel like we have to take a stand to not only pray, but you have to position yourself to fully believe. Like it's different when we pray without belief, but when we actually take a stand to believe, because out of belief 
is what you're going to declare in the year of the mouth. So it's interesting that 2020 is so crazy, <laughs> but it's the year of the mouth. So, so I'm going to encourage all of you, no matter where you're at in your walk, to listen to the word when it says there is power of life or death in the tongue. And that's not just physical, that's circumstantial, that's financial, that's emotionally. Like I'm, I'm saying, what do you want to see right now? And what do you want to see at the end of this? I am a millionaire. I am healthy. I am an amazing minister. I own 20 properties. Why not? It's not, what are you going to do with the wealth? Are you going to give it to the kingdom? Are you going to, you know what I mean? So it's really the motive of the heart. What do you want to see happen? And even if everything around you looks the opposite, come against that in the opposite spirit. Speak out of belief what you want to see happen in this time and after. And then I'm going to just say this, like there was a, a scripture. I'm just going to read this. Um, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. And that's the whole point, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Because it's in times like this where what we what we say we believe is actually got to be done, if that makes sense. It's got to actually be put to work. So I love you guys. And um, it's Vincent's turn. I hope that blessed somebody. But I just want you to walk out of this deciding I'm not going to confess anything other than the power of God over my life. That's it. Thank you, Keely. It blessed me. Hey, everybody. Um, so there's three things I want to talk uh, about today. And one is having a God-focused foundation. And two is realigning your life. And three is moving forward with purpose. Um, so just a quick background about my life. Um, I grew up in San Diego, California. The only reason why I started dancing was because I was actually 315 pounds, but I didn't want to take PE. And that was a way of the Lord letting me into dance because I could use that for PE credit. From there, I graduated from high school, got a full scholarship to the University of the Arts in Philadelphia. Um, my senior year, I got invited to join Complexion's Contemporary Ballet. And at that time, I knew the Lord, but I didn't have a relationship with the Lord. And as soon as I got into the company, the Lord just met me with the Holy Spirit. I was birthed into a relationship with the Holy Spirit, and God called me out of it to, to really reveal who I truly am. And so that took me on a whole journey um, of like going to get my master's at UC Irvine, where I studied sacred dance and how to bring the dance of the Bible and put it on the concert stage. And it was really hard because at that time, I, I didn't see a lot of professional dancers like leaving the industry or laying down their career or like not going to audition. But the Lord was like, come, come follow me. Um, and that led me to uh, Bellhaven University led me to Randy and so many great people that I see right now who have just been such a blessing to my life to, to draw me to this place. Um, and so the past uh, seven years, I've been walking that and finding purpose in my life um, to realize that I was called to um, raise up a generation that will worship him in spirit and truth, um, not just in the church, but also those who are professional dancers as well and so um it's just so great to be on here i see so many uh dancers um on like page two and three who are like professional dancers and it's so amazing that you were a part of this conversation um but those three things i just wanted to share about because i felt like the lord was revealing to me that there is a target on the dance industry right now like it's like it's so clear in the spirit and he's like i've, I've pulled back my arrow and i'm about to send out those and uh, uh just cause a revival in the dance scene not just in the church but also in the industry in the um um, professional world. Um, and there was a word that was given to me a couple of years ago, and some of you guys might have heard it, but God said, every king has his royal dancer, but I'm having but I'm having difficulty getting mine. And so for so long, I feel like there's been this 
this, I, I'm a professional dancer, but I give my gift fully to the world. And maybe on Easter, I might dance at my church, but I feel like there's a shift that's about to happen. Um, and so right now, as we know, there's all these different, the shaking has happened. Like this, the shaking of our foundation, which is the one thing I wanted to talk about is realizing maybe the foundation of your career is being shaken. Like the, you don't have a job right now. You, you're not performing. There was auditions that were dancers were preparing, you know, in their college that this is what I'm going to do but it's been shaking you know those dreams that they have have been placed on pause and this pause is so important because I feel like these three things that God wants us to evaluate in our life and what is our foundation even the um the foundation of our identity now that we aren't hanging out with our friends or we're not having those interactions maybe socially we had our identity in people or maybe even as worshipers i know a lot of us are leaders in, in our church maybe we can't go before the congregation and lead them into worship and maybe how some of those things could have been clouded were you really doing it out of the love of god and i believe everyone on here is and still is but even going deeper the lord is in, is encouraging the bride to come closer and to come lower and lower to even find to to almost like offer every ounce that could have been pride could have been like it was for me to get the glory because we want he wants a worshiping bride that will worship in spirit and truth truly for him and so when you have um an identity so if if your foundation of your identity is being shaken to know that were you living a life of doing or were you doing it out of being because right now we're sitting at home and we may not have the church to gather but are you still going to give him that worship you know and, and i think that that even that time it reveals um that that god is inviting us into to even more um communion with him now that we have the time um, also, um, just realizing is my foundation God focused or was it me focused? Um, I just, I, I mean, I've heard just so many testimonies of dancers who are like, I just don't, I don't know. I, I thought I had my five year plan and, it, and it's shattering right before me. And I feel like that's an invitation for you to start to build your foundation in God of your career and of your identity, just specifically those two things um, th that he would be the one who would establish that so it can hold strong. Um, and then the second thing was realigning your life. I just feel like the Lord wants you in some of you who are um, professional dancers that maybe your, your identity was actually in your dance and you thought the dance, which truly is the vehicle, it's not the worship, it's not the offering, but it's, it's, it's that your life is the offering. And so um, to realize that God wants you to realign yourself, not as a dancer, but as a son and as a daughter and to realign yourself as a worshiper and not a servant you know and not just an artist not just a dancer so um and i'm just throwing things out there um, along the way because i'm trying to press for time but i just want that you to know that this is an invita invitation with all this time that God is like, will you come? Let me speak to you once again, who you are. Even those who are leaders, like even for me, you know, the Lord is, is showing me even more a deeper revelation of who he sees me to be. Um, not even, um, not what I, even what I perceived it to be a year ago is still changing because I'm coming into the revelation of who he says my identity is. Um, and then the other thing is realigning your career to realize that if you're truly a daughter or a son and not a artist or a professional just dancer, that you don't walk into the room as, oh, I'm just a choreographer or I'm just a teacher or I'm just an instructor or I'm just a director. You come in as I'm a priest, I'm a son, I'm a daughter. That is when people meet me, they get to meet Jesus, you know, whether it is in the studio, whether it is in the lobby while I'm talking to people that I can still have the spirit of the Lord to speak to them in a moment. And I just feel like that's as we're in this pause and in this moment as, um, Misty was talking about the end of the bowl that he is letting us to have a whole new perspective of our life of like, really, who am I? What's the purpose of my life? Was it just from gig to gig to check to check? Or really, was it um, knowing that every job, every uh, opportunity was actually an assignment that I got to go in and cast the net, that I got to go in and to reveal the Lord when I'm choreographing on someone, that I'm speaking life over them, that I'm giving them, I'm, I'm ministering to the Lord while I'm doing it. But through me, he's ministering and through you as well, ministering 
his spirit to them, that they can sense that in the room. And so I feel like as we are getting ready to move out, that we would be prepared and realign our identity as sons and daughters, but also identity in our career. What is our career unto him, whether you're a teacher, director or whatnot. Um, and I love what um, Keely was talking about, about the two different calendars. Um, that there's man's calendar, but then there's also the Hebrew calendar. And in this, in this uh, sense of chaos and like the pause that Misty talked about, it almost allowed us to realize how in our lives, how are we off of what God's or like divine plan for us was, where it can be so quick to get a word and say, oh, I'm called to do this, but we didn't stay a little longer to hear when the timing was. And you know, and I feel like um, all those uh, this moment is allowed to see, Lord, what are you doing? And not what's my calendar of my life? Where's the journey that I wanted? And I know it's so easy for dancers, for us dancers to begin to build that, that 10 year plan. And, we, and we're hungry for it and we're running after it. But the Lord's like, hold on, come back into the field with me. Come out of that castle. Like some of you guys may have been like right at the pinnacle of your career. You felt like I was just about to go into this. And the Lord's like, come back into the field so I can minister to you once again, like David. Um, and then uh, the last one is moving forward in purpose in this season and moving forward out of our priesthood and not our uh, out of our careers and our, our uh, performance type of identities. Um, and one way I, I encourage you to move forward is practice the presence. Like this is a great time to practice the presence, practice loving on the Lord, start to research, um, whether it's the Hebrew words of praise, whether it's getting, playing the songs that he loves, how do you minister to the King? And how does he love to see you minister? You know, putting on, filling your home with praise. Like this is the time to just get um, saturated in the presence. Um, because right now, maybe Maybe, maybe some, for some of you guys, I believe it might be hard to, to worship. Some people may feel like, I actually don't even want to worship, but I know I want to. And, and, and I think that's the Lord challenging to realize that you don't need a whole worship band to, to lead you into the presence. You don't need someone to hold your hand and bring you. He's like, I want you to know at the end of the day that I can come into the presence, that I'm worthy enough to come to the presence, that I've been called to engage and commune with the presence. Like he wants every single bride to know who they are and to know that you're worthy. And so I just encourage you to know, like, there's a God, there's a Father, Abba Father, that's like, I'm right here. Would you just look up to me? Would you just speak my name? And even if you're like, I don't even know if he's really there, you know, because maybe it's easier to worship when everyone's watching you and you're moving and you're dancing. And, and the Lord's like, I want to break that. I want you to move every single time just for me, just with me. So I encourage you to do that. Practice the presence. Um, and then the second one was to begin to assess, uh, assessing your gifts and your abilities and begin to lay them back down. So for dancers, of course, it's dance, it's dance. Like, okay, God, you give me this ability. I want to lay this back down at your feet. You give me the, the voice to sing. You give me the ability to direct. I lay it back. And Lord, I don't want to pick it back up if it's going to bring me out of alignment in this new season that I'm going. I don't want to, I don't want to steward that gift wrong, you know. And so I just encourage you to lay, look, say, what are my giftings? Maybe there might be some giftings that you haven't even tapped into that he's like, I want to bring that this, this season. But if you didn't have this pause, you would have never asked me. So just really see this time as really sacred, even though it's like, what's going on? But no, like this this was all a part of his plan and this will pass over. That at the end of the day, as we're coming up to Passover, when, it, when there was uh, locusts and there was famine and there was you know, uh, diseases that were, that were coming in that season that they had to plead and say, no, this is my house. And as we're sitting at home, we begin to plead the blood of our home and plead the blood of Jesus and begin to worship in the tabernacle while this, while this passes over. Um, and then the last one is to, to know that as we move forward with purpose, that you begin, once this lifts up, that you will see yourself one who can set the captives free wherever you are. And to remember that that is our, our, our goal at the end of the day is to build the kingdom, to bring more people into this, uh, this relationship with the Father. It's not to get a job. It's not to be in this company. It's not, you just begin to say, God, give me the perspective as I move forward so I can be your hand, so I can reach out and bring um, people closer to you. So I just wanted to share just that. And so bless you guys.
Hey everyone, uh, I'm Steve Rooks, uh, for those of you who don't know me. Um, anyway, long story short, um, I, I began dancing in New York. Um, first I was a student and then a member of the Ailey Two before joining the Martha Graham Company, where I was a principal dancer with them for over a decade. And now my passion for many, many years now is teaching and mentoring. I mean, that's really where my heart is. And I have the privilege and honor of having a relationship with a lot of the people in the, on, the, on the panel and faculty that I really owe, owe a great deal to. And so uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak. And I, I really don't have a long thing to share um, because I believe that uh, we were asking for unity amongst us as we were sharing. And I really feel that everyone's kind of shared from, from my heart as well. Uh, the things that have already been previously shared. But um, I will say this, that um, it's um, quite an experience to kind of be riding out this, uh, uh, this season of, of, of being um, kind of in quarantine, so close and near the epicenter of it here in New York. Um, there's a lot of artists that you know, are, are posting on Instagram and, and I do celebrate the generosity that's come out. I celebrate all the innovation that's coming out of this. I think that's wonderful. And I really am so grateful that for many of us believers, we have this surety of a foundation that God will get us through. Um, and, um, and, I, and I know that uh, one of the things that I'm, 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 I'm also seeing that's happening is, is this is driving many of us uh, to a place of just real, really being authentic in our faith, you know, where, where we really stand firm in what God and who we believe God is. Um, I'm seeing, you know, these vision, these uh, videos of people that have been crying out in the uh, for God in the streets of Brazil and in India, you know, and um, kind of the theme song, one of the theme songs of the season right now is uh, The Blessing by Kari Jovi. I mean, uh, there's, there's a version where people are singing in all these different languages. So we know that there's a move of God and, I, and, and we know that God is faithful and um, that he'll see us through. But my heart also goes to this kind of place that's on the other side of the fence, well as for people who are really going through stuff. I mean, I, I hear Charmaine's heart. And I think of so many of my friends who, um, who have dance companies, who, who they earn their living by teaching dance classes. And that's how they pay their rent. And that's how they take care of things. And even with the, the, the promises of the stimulus checks, it's, it's gonna be a tough season. Um, and so I think that uh, in, in the process of us, uh, uh, trusting God and believing him and, and, and really being a conduits of his love to people who are hurting. This is, very, this is, this is a very, very different season. It's a global one. And um, I think that um, it's important for us to really sell, sell close to the Lord's heart. And, and I, I dare say, rather than even praying to come out of it stronger, let's really pray that we come out of it transformed. Because the, the, the world that we're going to be coming into is going to be so vitally different. We don't have a point of view. And, the, and the, for lack of a better, the script changes every day. Again, it doesn't, it doesn't dissuade about our confidence and the surety of who God is and that he's our provider. And I know that he'll take care of us. But also, we want to come out of it at a new place. We don't want to be the same person you know, that we want to come out of it transformed so that we're able to really understand, you know, that we're, you know, when you're speaking to people, it's not done out of a sense of just uh, Christian duty, but a real passion for people to understand um, the, the power of God to transform their lives, but also that, that their new place of hurt is someplace that we've never known before, you know. Um, I thank you, Kevin, for your exhortation, for sharing and generosity, because I think that's going to be part of it. Uh, to, because this also, I'll tell you, in this process too, you know, with uh, all of the innovations and things that we're seeing in terms of the media and the, the videos of classes and all like that, uh, that's wonderful. And, uh, but, but human interaction is so vital in what we do. You know, uh, we have a career that um, is primarily spent relating with other people in a studio. You know, you said thousands of classes uh, for maybe the three performances or four performances that you might have on stage. Uh, so there's this great dichotomy there. But I just really, again, just as a kind of a capstone, just really, you know, we can all find ourselves a place of using this to really seek God's mind, his heart, to walk us through. And he will, and he'll do that. He's faithful. But also understanding that we've got to have a level of sensitivity. You know, people have lost loved ones. You know, here in New York, I'm, I'm knowing more people that are facing the virus who have gone through it, um, you know, as it continues to grow. But I also know that... Um, that coming out of this, I don't want to be the same. I don't want to be a stronger version of Steve. I want to be a different version of someone, you know, of, of, as God has transformed us. So 
just be encouraged, you know, uh, remember the stories, remember the people around you, uh, you know, and um, even as we trust this mighty God that we serve. Amen. So I'm going to hand it back to uh, Cynthia and Randy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's incredible. Um, well, my co-host, he's been referred to quite a few times through this um, conversation we're having tonight. And so, Randy, I know you've got a response to the you know, multiple things that have been said. So I just would love for you to share um, some of your take on it or expand a little bit further from some of the things that we've been articulating. Hold on one second, Randy. I'm going to unmute you here. With, but I've there never met face to face. Oh, okay. Yep, you're <laughs> so good. Thank you to everyone. And for some of you, I've never met you face to face yet, but we dialogue back and forth on social media. And this is just quite a, a joy to uh, build each other up in the faith and to be able to share what has been laid up on our heart in this time, how we're personally kind of navigating this uh, new normal, um, something that I want to kind of uh, utilize from the different things that I've heard and kind of tie into something for, for me personally that has been quite uh, revelatory is this. You know, in Psalms 46, there's a verse that I hear quoted a lot right now, particularly that says, be still and know that I am God. I think though we have to be careful how we may interpret or translate that. This is God speaking, saying, you be still and know that I am God. Not that God is being still, not that God has left the room or left the stage. God is still on the throne. He is still on the stage. He's still in the center of our lives. He is still in control of this world. So when he says, be still and know that I'm God, he's telling us, you take my directive, you be still. But whenever God tells us to be still, if we can relate back to the, the New Testament story of Martha and Mary, Mary chose to sit at Jesus' feet, in a sense, to be still and to know <laughs> that he was God and to listen to this wisdom of the kingdom of heaven, Martha was just staying busy, busy, busy. And Jesus actually called her name twice and said, look, Martha, it's your sister that has chosen the better thing here. So if God gives us this directive, be still and know, it's because he wants to impart, just like he was imparting to Mary that day. Mary got downloads from Jesus that day that Martha kind of, uh, negated in a sense because she was so distracted i believe that this is a perfect time for new downloads from the holy spirit uh, to truly be still to find fresh innovation and inspiration and connectivity uh you know i don't think if it wasn't for what we're dealing with right now we would be having this koinonia via zoom and being able to really encourage one another on a wider basis than we're normally able to do. You know, we might have different events that different of us host, but not all of us can come to those events. So now we're gathered together. So as I've been thinking about this, these downloads of the Lord in times that he tells us to be still, I'm reflecting back on some beautiful passages. One is the story of Daniel, where... Um, the king had asked for the wise men of Babylon to interpret his dream, to tell the dream and interpret it. And that was like an impossibility for the wisest of the Chaldeans. But Daniel said, give me some time. And Daniel went and he sought the Lord. And in that seeking, God gave Daniel this download. It saved the execution of these other uh, scholars and even, you know, pagan uh, astrologers and magicians. Um, but how would I say? It also exalted Daniel to a place of great influence within that culture as well. It was the same for Joseph in Egypt. Egypt went through a great famine. It was a time of devastation. 
but Joseph was given downloads by God. And Joseph actually saved the nation of Egypt as well as the surrounding nations that were also dealing with the famine as well. Then that brings me to this, and it's the story of Bezalel in chapter 31 of Exodus. It says that Bezalel was filled with the Spirit of God, the first mention of anyone being filled with the Spirit of God, an artist. Not only was he filled with the Spirit of God, but through those spiritual giftings, he was given wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, which means discernment. This artist filled with the spirit was given wisdom. Wisdom to build this dwelling place for God in a time in history that was so crucial for people to know that God was among them. They needed this, this sense of awareness, God, you're with us. God had brought them out of Egypt, out of a very difficult place of slavery, now they're in the wilderness. We're kind of in a wilderness right now, and they needed a tangible expression of God. So what did God do in this time? Hey, Moses, I need to let you know, <laughs> I've called Bezalel. His name means under the shadow of God, and I have filled him with my spirit, and I have given this artist, this craftsman, this artisan, wisdom. In Proverbs, it says that wisdom begins with the reverent fear of the Lord. But in that place, we're giving this innovation, these inspirations. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, no eye is seen, no ear is heard, nor is entered into the heart of man. The things that God desires to reveal to those that love him, that the man born or the woman born of the spirit of God can receive the things from the spirit of God. Guys, I want to encourage you, just as we've heard from all of our wonderful speakers today, this time of being still is not, it's, it's for our sake, to be still and to receive as artists of the Lord these blueprints that God wants to initiate his kingdom here on earth in a new way. Isaiah 60, arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And it says in that verse, deep darkness has covered the earth. Well, right now, that's what's happening. Deep darkness is covering the earth. But the glory of God rises upon you. And men will come to the brightness of your rising. So I believe that right now, we're having this time to be still, like Vincent has encouraged us, to still bring forth our worship, to open up our spiritual ears, our spiritual hearts, to be generous in our hearts and our spirits and with our giving, but to receive new innovation and inspiration because wisdom is needed. I'm praying for wisdom. I also believe that God causes his favor and his grace to fall on the just and the unjust alike. So I'm praying for a divine spirit of God's wisdom upon our, our leadership globally for scientists, for doctors, because God can reveal things to people like he did to Daniel and Joseph that totally brings transformation and brings uh, deliverance, uh, brings hope, brings healing, brings solutions. Uh, you know, it was the, the prophet Elisha that he said, okay, we're going to take the salt and pour the salt into the water, and this is going to heal these bitter streams because people were dying. So it's God who gives wisdom. And it says in the book of James, when we lack wisdom, then let us go before the throne of God's grace. And he gives wisdom liberally. So I want to use this time. I'm in a new time of stillness in my life like never before. But I want to use that stillness to listen. What is the spirit saying about his light in me? about his glory over my life, about giving me new inspiration and innovation. And it may not be for tomorrow, but in the end, like the book of Habakkuk, it will speak. So write the vision now and make it plain, because even though for right now it might tarry, in the end, it is going to speak. So I just want to encourage all of you, my precious brothers and sisters and fellow artists in the Lord, 
utilize this time to tune in your ears and say, okay, Lord, I'm going to be like Mary right now. I'm going to be still and know, absolutely know what Keely said, know that you are God. And I'm opening my heart, Father. I'm opening up my mind. Lord, speak to me the truth of your kingdom. And Lord, show me what is the next step for me, because there's going to be a new release out of this. And the earth is going to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And so, Father, if that light and that glory is to arise upon us, even in times that are dark, because darkness will cover the earth, but then you say kings will come to the brightness of your rising, then God, let it be. This is a new level. This is a, a new depth for all of us. It might be a little bit of uncomfortable, but I tell you what, if you were in the ocean and all of a sudden you felt yourself like going deeper, you would be like overwhelmed. And right now I'm overwhelmed. I don't feel like I'm in shallow water. I feel like I'm in deeper waters now than ever before. And I can't control those waters, kind of like in the book of Ezekiel. I'm not in charge. Now those waters are taking me and some of the experiences and the natural, yes and amen, they are uncomfortable. But I know that new things are going to be birthed from this place. So I want to encourage you all, pray for the spirit of wisdom. I've actually prayed, ironically enough, that the spirit of wisdom that God gave to Bezalel, that he will give to me as an artist of the kingdom as well, that I can create these places of the dwelling of the kingdom of God here on earth, not for my glory, but for the glory of God. Thank you, Randy. Thank you so much. So incredible. We need these rich words to continue to wash over us. Um, and some of the imagery that you shared um, earlier today, I was sitting with my family in our living room and doing home church and the pastor shared about um, a devastating time and just reminding us that we go through tra tragedies in life and we can come out on the other side. And it might be coming out on the other side in glory or it might come out on the other side in some type of transformation. And he shared the story of this um, father who um, the pastor got a call to come out to the reservoir because they had um, the father was missing. And so the, the wife, the children, the neighbors, other church community people came gathering around and the rescue um, mission was in place to search for him. And then it went into actually a search and rescue because um, the man had passed and um, drowned in the waters, in the deep waters. Um, but when they found him, he was not too far from his home that was on the shore, but where they think he had um, come from, I believe it's from a boat that he came from, he was closer to home. And the daughter, even in her grief, articulated, well, daddy was trying to make his way home mm -hmm. in the waters. And it, we may feel like we're drowning right now. And yet God is on the shore and we are on the shore and we are about doing a rescue mission where we're going to continue to help us all to navigate these deep waters. And that's the only place that we're really going to, um, to find God in that cleansing in that submersion in his fullness of glory and grace. But there's breath on the other end of it. And this man, obviously his life breath, um, did not continue. However, they knew that he was so assured of being able to have eternity in heaven forever. And that's our hope and glory. Um, these couple of scriptures in reference also, Randy, what you're saying says, on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wonderful works, I will meditate. And that's in Psalm 145, 5. And so we're talking about this quietness. We're talking about this place of contemplation and meditating. Um, in Psalm 104, 31, let the glory of the Lord endure forever. Let the Lord be glad at his works. And so God is at work and God is pleased at his work. And he's allowing us to get caught up with this work that he's doing. And then in Psalm 113, 4, the Lord is high above all the nations. His glory is above all the heavens. And so this virus is 
it's global. There's no place on this earth really where it isn't touching in some way in affecting people in um, very devastating ways. However, the scripture says that the Lord is high above all nations. He sees all this. He is supreme. He is sovereign. He is over it all. And the images that we've been seeing about this, you know, pressing down and pushing up, God is, is hovering. We know that in the scriptures where he is the spirit of the Lord and he's hovering. And so all of these words that we are hearing from our, um, from our brothers and our sisters, just being encouraged that mm. we, we do need to take our part. And so I just wanted to open this time. If there's anything else that leaders want to share, or if we have questions um, that we want to ask or um, allow some of the, um, you know, leaders to continue to expand. Vincent, I see your hand there. Yeah, I just wanted to tag on to what you and Randy were just talking about the, the importance. You can hear me, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the importance of being still. Like I, that, that's so like what I sense in my spirit because a couple years ago, real quick, I went to a silent retreat. It was for three, three days and my life was always just going, 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 you know, as an artist. But the power of having three days to just be silent and still and just hear from the Lord and not talk to people um, really birthed a new relationship in the Lord that I, I didn't have. Like I sat on a bench in the Lord. I felt the presence of the Lord sit next to me and I was like ready to do something. He's like, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to talk. anything. I just want to sit with you. And that just blew my mind. And so I think that's that same type of revelation of being still and knowing that he's God, whether it's he's rejoicing, dancing, declaring, singing over you, whatever that is, or just sitting right next to you. But when Randy was talking about three things stood out to me because I felt like the spirit of the Lord was saying that in this season, like there's a death to the old that he wants to happen. Just like uh, Steve talked about that. We don't want to come out just stronger, but we want to come out transformed. And I think it's, it's so much more like open your eyes to everyone that it's not just Oh, I just want to get stronger at that. It's like you, when you step out, he wants to fashion you into a whole nother being, like to be transformed. And it's going to be a death to old habits. Like there's some habits that you can't even do because you're stuck in the house. You know, there's people that, that, are, that are dying because you can't even engage with them. So there's things that he's actually wanting to give you a long enough time to be able to chop off through and to see things the way that they truly are. And then also the second thing was to set yourself apart. Like this is a time of consecration. Uh, like uh, like it's almost like the god god said you're not gonna fast it you're not gonna fix it everybody put on pause everybody's on a fast here we go like consecrate yourself set yourself apart you know and like in this consecration uh miss newsman miss newman you said this about the washing i feel like the lord i started to see rain like there's a washing that's going to happen that's going to cleanse like first it's going to come like a washing cleansing and then it's going to come like a refiner fire to burn everything that doesn't bring him praise and it may hurt it may feel uncomfortable but in the stillness let yourself have it. Let him do it. Say, God, it stings. It hurts. I'm holding on to it. But God, just do it. Take over in my life. Like, go to that place with the Lord. And then the last thing was that he is the answer. Social media is not the answer. Your boss is not the answer. You have to come back to him. I feel like Jesus, the face of the Judah, wants to be right there in every situation, every little thing that you, you're trying to reach out to find. He's like, come back to me. Come back to me in the stillness. So I just wanted to say that from what you guys were saying. Wow. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, um, thank you, Vincent, for what you shared. Um, um, you know, one of, one of the amazing things about this season that demands stillness is that the Lord has flatlined everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like um, if you have the largest mega church or you have a church with two people, everybody's, everybody's, everybody's still. And, and I think that's a glorious thing because he's, 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 the, what he's trying to speak is universal. You know, it's, it's for everyone, it's for every generation, it's for every, you know, it's, it's for every uh, income strata, you know, and, and so that's a, it's great to be at that place. So we really have to hear from God. Um, but I, I also think it's important and exhort us to really just continue to just appeal to God for his mercy and also for breakthrough. I think for, you know, what Randy was sharing about uh, uh, innovations and praying for people to have wisdom in terms of scientists, in terms of combating this thing, I think it's great. I, uh, I, I think of the, the scripture that's in, um, it's in Second Chronicles um, uh, 2012. And um, at this is Jehoshaphat is getting ready to face this amazing army. And what I love about it is at the end of this prayer, after he goes and he appeals to God, he just says, you know, we, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. 
And I think it's just something about being at that place and saying, you know what, God, this is large, this is huge. We don't understand all the ramifications. We know that you are allowing it for a reason. But God, we appeal to you. You can do great things, God. Do the miraculous. We dare to believe you to do things that transcend what our, even our finite minds can understand. This what an opportunity for us. So I just, you know, that we'd be encouraged in this season where everything's flatlined, but we also have this great time to appeal to God, the same God that Jehoshaphat stood in front of with that army, and he had no idea what to do, and God equipped him. I just wanted to add um, what Stephen was saying. Like that is is also a choice because it's our perspective on what's happening. Because we can either choose again to like focus on what we don't have. It's like that simple saying, like half full or half empty. Like we focus on the water that we do have versus what we don't have. It creates the reality that we're sitting in. Because we can get, like Charmaine was saying, and I, I, I love how raw and real she was about it, is that she almost felt sick because of the anxiety and the things that she was feeling, which is natural and normal, but it does literally make you sick. So like, if, but because she can make and we can all make, a con it takes work and it takes a conscious decision to choose what we're going to focus on, to choose what we're going to believe, right? So we create that reality within this like my husband was saying, like if you folk, and even uh, I was listening to Chris Valadin today, and he was saying, if you if you're on the TV and you're watching the news all day, you're gonna focus on all this reporting and all this stuff, you know, and it's gonna make you feel annoyed and frustrated, and then you're gonna get into the politics, and which is what I saw myself doing. So I was like, wait a minute, I should really like Randall said, like be like take the time to spend more time with God, like and to focus on the realities of the kingdom of God versus the realities of the planet right now, you know? So it's like, a, you have to make a, con we have to make a conscious decision to pull ourselves out of the, the possible negativity of the reality that we're facing. Does that make sense? Like yes. sometimes you have to fight. Like when I, I was bedridden for almost like six months and I would lay on that bed and I would just have to confess, like, this is not the end. This is not my future. This is not what's going to happen two years from now. But, but literally after six months of being on the bed, you're like, is this my real? No, this is not my reality. You know what I mean? So it's like, just to add, like, how much can you pull yourself out of some, like the negative feelings that you might go through during this whole time? Cause I've been like this certain days. You know, and then some days I'm like really strong and happy and joyful, you know, so it depends. What do you focus on? Like, are you focusing on the realities of the kingdom or what we're seeing right now? And then some things, you know, you it, obviously it's like you're you're trying to figure out how you're going to buy your next meal. You know, your stomach is hungry. Like, it's not as simple as what I'm saying. But but it, but even in that moment, just keep believing, just keep believing, because this is where we have our spiritual workouts, you know. Uh, I don't know um, about you guys. Um, I know for me personally right now, um, my witness has risen to a new level for all of us. And, you know, and I know so many of you, we have spheres of influence. And within those spheres, a big population of those individuals are not believers in the Lord. Um, they are totally connected to the arts community and the professional dance world. Uh, and so for so many, their minds and their hearts are so far away from uh, any, even, how would I say, a small embrace of Jesus or the gospel. Um, and, and I think over the years, the church now has been trying to cater in an apologetic way that we don't step on toes, that our, our voice got a little bit suppressed. And how would I say, we, you know, we, we want it to be kind and, you know, again, not uh, trample upon other people's opinions, uh, and we and, and we should have uh, sensitivity. But I think we also got passive. Um, 
and not, how would I say, feeling as if, you know what? I can speak into this situation. And I believe right now, because of the criticalness of this time, I mean, people are dying. People are losing their jobs. This is severe. It's severe. In that severity, my boldness of my faith is, is risen up not to be repulsed, repulsive to anyone, but to be honest of this is where I stand. This is where I find my hope. And I'm finding that I'm not afraid to engage with people authentically, not to be self-righteous or, uh, you know, how would I say, uh, hyper-religious, but to be honest in, about my faith and to share that not only with the safety of my brothers and sisters in Christ, like perhaps today, but to share it with those dear friends of mine who don't yet know the Lord, to share my reason for hope in this time, to share my offerings that show God's grace and his love and his beauty and his redemption to people. And so this is actually giving me a little bit of a spiritual shot in the arm because of the seriousness of the time. It's causing me to awaken and rise up. And I'm wondering if any of you guys are feeling the same, because I know for a lot of you, you know, you're very intertwined in the professional world of the arts as well, and a lot of your spheres of influence. Uh, but I know for sometimes it's difficult to know, okay, what can I say? What can I not say? You know, I'm just going to try to live out my faith the best I can and hoping they'll see. But are, is, is anyone else on here finding that right now, in, in a way, your own witness is being more emboldened because you realize, hey, people are dying right now and people are suffering and people are fearful. Hey, I got to take this little basket off of my light and my light's got to shine now. Can other people comment on this? Because I know I'm feeling this now. I, I can join in here. Um, so I was just saying this, going to throw my jazz hands in here again. So, you know, if this was the world and this was our reflection of it, right? Like the world two months ago was pretty stable, pretty stasis. And I think a lot of the Christian community had the same response, right? Like, well, there's no waves here. So there's no waves here, right? And then all of a sudden we had this like big dip down, but it's causing this awesome um, opposite rise, right? So based on the severity of what we're going through, emboldens by that same measure or even more the response of the person who has a rock to stand on when it feels like the bottom that's going out, that has a lifeline, that has a hope, that has a confidence that even if all of this burns up, that we actually will not lose that which matters most which is our eternal security, right? I mean, we, we've got these 300 affiliated dance schools. I was like, oh my gosh, like what, what, if, what, if, it all, what if it all goes, right? What do I still have? I'm like, well, I have that which can't perish. I mean, and if I still have that, then what, what am I actually risking to bounce as high as this has gone low or higher in confidence? And I mean, just to encourage people, I mean, people are watching those who, uh, who who have at any time given any hint of any assurance of faith like never before i mean i put out on some of these online communities saying hey you know we're gonna we're gonna have this prayer time at 10 o'clock on this certain day there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people i've never met nor seen nor heard from that said you know i'm gonna pray i'm gonna pray i'm gonna pray and i just think there's an absolute hunger for this and that our response to it should be as as high as this is deep if not more and the other thing that i wanted to share with you i recently learned that um about that phrase faith as small as a mustard seed that the original word small didn't mean little it meant brevity and I, that just i keep thinking about that and keep thinking about that because i always thought like oh if your faith is small as a mustard seed and that was like an embarrassing shame inducing verse for me like oh gosh well i guess nothing's happening in my life because my faith it's not even as big as this tiny little thing like how small is my faith right now and that's not actually what the original language meant it meant brevity it so basically it's telling you make your faith be longer 
right? Like stick with it longer, stay in it longer, sit still longer, pray for breakthrough longer. So I just love that idea that yes, let's mirror the situation, but better and higher and point them towards Jesus and let's stay at it longer. Let's, let's not do, um, you know, like we've all been pulling that, like Keely said, like, I'm up, I'm down. It's great. It's, you know, like, like let our, let our confidence in the situation not be tied to the tax rebate or whether or not we get the PPP or the PUA or the IDL or the other alphabet soup, right? Like the only letters I want to be tied to is the GOD. Hmm. Like all of that can go away and none of it might never come through. So I don't know. Let's be a little, let's be a little longer in our approach here. I just want to jump in. Go ahead. Yes, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Cyril. I'll go after you. Who is that? Because I can only see a few Vincent. people. Vincent. I was just getting ready to talk about you, Vincent. Oh. So one of the things that you had shared was that we want to be in a place where we are seeing captives set free. And I think as dance artists and if you know as god is using the dance world and what randy's saying in boldness is that i know for for me personally one of the things that um that i want to be deepened in is is having god use my life to actually see captive set free and so that takes the time sitting with the lord that takes getting that download from the lord that takes you know letting the onion of your life be peeled away from you in an uncomfortable, comfortable matter. Um, and allowing us to come like, not come out better dancers, not come out stronger, not come out. No, but come out in a place where there's the power to set captives free through your words, through the fact that you've sat with the Lord and the fact that you are in tune with the Lord and through that, I think it's an undeniable acknowledgement of those around us, whether they know the Lord or not, that you've been with, with the Lord. And it just reminds me of how Moses was transformed and you knew that he had been with the Lord. And so we've all had those moments of where we've been on a retreat or we've been somewhere and God has just poured his spirit over us and we've come out shining and we're not shining because we're better people. We're shining because we've been with, we've been with our father. And so in that sense of um, what is going to spring forth and the harvest that's going to be there, I think our lives um, are going to radiate his presence. And I think that alone is going to, we, we're, we're, we're going to have boldness just because we've been with the Lord. You know, when you've been with hanging out with your best friend all weekend and, you know, you're going to be talking about that. And so when you're getting those downloads from the Lord and those sweet times with Jesus, you're going to be talking about it. And it's going to be so authentic and so real. It's going to carry the power of the word of God on it. It's going to transform people's lives and which is going to be beautiful. Um, and our dance friends need to see that, that authenticity, that joy, that presence of God. And I think, um, it doesn't come from, from us. It comes from his presence through us. Hmm. Wow. I, I want to share a quick testimony about this. Um, so because I wanted to keep my dance company connected, I gave them a little assignment to do at home uh, to come up with a few fr uh, phrases to the song, The Blessing, that Steve talked about uh, that uh, – Carrie Job and Cody Carnes has done from Elevation Worship. And uh, so you know, they went outside or in their bedrooms or whatever and put some choreography and one of my young dancers, you know, uh, she put it all together and then we, I went ahead and I posted it up on Facebook. And, you know, I took the risk of looking foolish as well with my friends in the arts that are not believers. But I thought, you know what, hey, I want to bless them too. The song is the priestly prayer, the Lord bless you and keep you. So yes, I'm going to put this out there for all of my friends, whether they're believers or non-believers, I want to bless them all. Well, I'm not going to mention names, but a colleague of Steve Rooks who danced with him in the Mark the Graham Dance Company uh, actually responded to that video. And he said, I just want you to know how beautiful this is. And uh, I sent it to my sister and my sister said, 
oh my gosh, this is such beautiful worship. He said, so now I want you to know that I'm sending it to my other family members that they can view this as well. And so how would I say this man, you know, I've, I've known him now for a few years. Steve has known him forever and a day, um, but he's never commented on anything that I've put out on social media, not, not in that depth of a way of saying, you know, how beautiful and how touching this is. And, and it's not that because it's like the most incredible dance in the world because they're dancing on their grass outside or on the semen or in tennis shoes, you know what I'm saying? But I think God opened his heart and, and, and actually the, 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 the word and this beautiful music blessed him. And I, I called Steve immediately and I said, Steve, you have to know what just happened. And Steve was just actually blown away, like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe that this guy did that. And not only did he receive it personally, but he wanted to send it out to his family members. Guys, I believe this is where we are. You know, I, I mentioned the story of Elisha, when these warders were bitter and people were being poisoned. And he said to the other prophets in his school at the time, bring me a new bowl. And that always fascinated me, like, why a new bowl? Because he said that in that new bowl, salt needed to be put into the new bowl, and the salt in the new bowl would be poured into these waters, and these waters would be healed. God's creating a new bowl right now that we, as the salt and the light, can be put into that bowl and poured out into proportion into the bitter waters of this world because that salt is going to bring healing and it's going to bring healing to the nations and guys you're that salt and you're that light don't hide it don't let it be trampled up on now's i believe the perfect time for our witness to go forth in more glory than it ever has before you know, and hey, we're all gracious, loving people. So, you know, we're not going to do it in a self-righteous, religious manner, but it's going to be done in a spirit of compassion and in authentic truth and beauty, what I call redemptive beauty and transcendent beauty, that people can have an encounter with the Lord through the offerings of God's people and, you know, Keely read that passage in Isaiah 61, giving beauty, a crown of beauty instead of ashes. This is the time, this is the moment like never before. The spirit of the Lord's upon us to do this. And further in that scripture, it says, and men will call you the priest of the Lord, the servants of the most high God. I just want to share one quick testimony on to what you were just talking about, Randy, about you were asking if anyone had felt that, also, that same boldness happening. Um, and just real quick, I just felt like the Lord is saying that we have not seen this before. Like, I, there's almost like we feel it, but we don't even know what it's going to look like. And I just believe like what you and Cynthia and Cheryl and so many of you guys have like steward before you've been praying for this outpouring that I believe that it's about to happen, like in, 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 a, in a rushing wave. And um, just a quick testimony. So this year, the Lord um, let me have the opportunity to teach Dallas Black Dance Leader here um, in Dallas, Texas. And I knew that it wasn't just an opportunity, but it was an assignment. And so here and there i've been walking and like talking to people on the side about the lord as it came but there was one day i teach on a thursday and it was wednesday night i'm driving my car just thinking about what class would be like you know as we all do and the spirit of, i'm seeing the class and the roll downs and then all of a sudden i'm seeing us worshiping i see my billows i see the flags have i see them following along people praying i'm like whoa whoa where am i and the spirit of the lord took me it was like i want you to worship i want them to worship me and so i was like right away i'm like no, because I feel like that's totally, let's be quiet, you know, and I, and I have a level of boldness, but this was like, felt like I was crossing the line if I were to invite the company to do this. And, mm -hmm. but I felt like the Lord began to give me downloads of like someone in there was having suicidal thoughts, somebody needed uh, peace in a situation, it was coming. And I felt like I was posed to a situation where it was like, I, I would be rebelling against God or denying God, but, and it was like man or God in a new way. And so I was like, you know what, God, I'm going to bring the flags. I'm going to like 
you know, tell them that's what we're going to do. And, and I just started off class and I said, you know, as a teacher, sometimes I, you can see what you physically need, you know, your bodies are tired, or even if what your soul needs, you know, that maybe you need a good, good vibe song to make you feel good. But I feel like today the Lord wants your spirit to be fed. And that was a really big deal for me. And I did it even in my own flesh, like fearful, but I knew the Lord was inviting me to share this information with them. And they kind of looked at me like, okay. And some people were like, yes, already, like they knew they needed or whatnot. And I was just like, little just trusting the Lord where I would normally not do this because it is like being too bold or somebody, you can get in trouble, but I felt the Lord was like, there's grace, like come into this. And, and I feel like you guys, all of you, after we come out of this transformation, will have situations with people that you normally wouldn't say, the classes that you wouldn't even bring it up, but the Lord was like, I want you to introduce them to me today. And so I told them how I felt like the Lord, that Dallas Black, you had the attention of heaven and I'm talking to them still like kind of nervous and like, okay. And so we start rolling down, we're doing plies, we're doing class. And I told them that we do an exercise later. And then, so pretty much I told them about dry bones and like, you're going to follow me. And so they're following me just kind of like, okay, we're following you. You know how you do congregational worship, but I, I literally didn't feel the atmosphere of the heaven in the room, but I was just like, Lord, I know you're there. You told me, like, I had to, like, feel like I had to keep going. Past. And I said, you're still there, even if I don't feel it. As soon as I did that, I felt him enter into the room. And the dancers are, like, following. And I said, now, to tell the bones that you want life to come, to, to, to arise, and they start breaking off. And literally, people started going into this place of worship. This girl started crying. This then all of a sudden dancers start praying over each other. I brought the flags out. We worshiped for the rest of class for 45 minutes. And it was the people on their face. And I was like, oh my gosh, wow. And so I just encourage you, especially teachers, leaders, like just be, be aware, even though it's like, ah, uh, maybe not. I shouldn't say that. I think there's, he's going to meet you on the other side because you've been transformed. So now you can walk, not just in knowledge, but you're going to walk in power because they could not, there's some people who are like, oh, what is this? But I felt like you could not deny the power that was in the room. And people are still saying that their lives were changed just because of that one class. And so I just encourage you, like, and I thank you, Randy, like what you guys are saying, like this is, this is what he's preparing us for. And we haven't seen it before, but when the boldness comes, honor it and say, I surrender to it. Here, here I am. Because this is what he's prepared us for. Amen. Yes. And just, just to encourage what Vincent said, you said a key word, which I think is so important for us as believers, is invitation. It's not us forcing this down people's throats. It is not banging people upside the heads with Bibles and, and you know, your own thus saith the Lord. It is inviting people to come and experience and partake and bringing them to the table and to feast at the table. You don't have to sit. It's not a mandate. God is not demanding us to do this because if it was that, there would be no different. We'd be robots. And he, he has the capability of doing that. What he wants is an invitation and a welcoming you to come and be a part of this. And as Keely was talking about, we have the choice and we can make that conscious decision. And even when I say that, that's not even fully true either. God gives us the ability to even choose him and to willingly come before him and say yes or, or, or you know, and to surrender in that way. I think as we continue to just seek God, just remembering that this is an opportunity we have to invite and welcome people and not uh, say, I told you so or all the other things like Randy was encouraging us to be gracious, to be honest, and to not, um, I can't think of the word that you said earlier, but it was so, so spot on that that is not, our heart is simply to, to create an open space, an openness for people to not feel judged or feel squashed or feel ashamed um, or fearful, but inviting and welcoming people to partake of the feast that he's prepared for us. So powerful. This, this has just been so incredible. I did put down in the chat and asked if people would be interested in having a gathering like this again, and I got a lot of yeses. So um, well, I'll start praying, Randy, and I'll talk. We'll talk with some of the other leaders and um, consider doing this again in another um, week or two and just let this even spread where we can share. And I'll have the recording and I'll put it up. Um, just even probably just on YouTube and can send the links to anybody who wants it. So you can share that and just give people even a taste of um, how God is moving and letting his wisdom continue to come forth through 
um, his you know, wisdom agents. Um, so is there anything else in closing before Randy um, closes us with a blessing and a prayer? Yes, we needed it, good. Yes, please, more, it's been so encouraging, absolutely. Yeah, and I admitted at the beginning, you know, having these kinds of gatherings, um, it's just such a, an enormous blessing and we need that. We, we need to encourage one another. I love that verse in Hebrews, let us not forsake our assembly as is the habit of some, but to encourage one another all the more until the day of Christ Jesus. And so that's what this is, um, that uh, admonishment and encouragement and exhortation and um, just proclamation of who we know um, God is. Yes, you're welcome. Cynthia, there's uh, somebody who has their hearings. I'm going to unmute their mic. Go ahead, my brother. Hey, thank you, uh, Darrell. This is Joe Yeager. Hey, guys. Hey, Joe. Uh, hey, Joe. Hey. Uh, hey. I've just, uh, I've had the privilege of just listening and absorbing and being refreshed tonight, Cynthia. Steve, hey, brother. I saw Bill hanging out in the wing over there. <laughs> um, hey, Randy. Hey, um, Joe. One of the things I, I thank you guys for bringing this together for such a time as this. Um, sometimes we get so locked into the uh, small world of ourselves and what's happening in our immediate community that we uh, almost feel lost. We feel like we're left out, we're alone in this battle. Um, and you guys have impacted my lives through the years. So a little, just a little bit on the side, I know we're getting ready to end here. Uh, was a missionary for a number of years in Central America. I've been in the arts for the last, Lord, 30 years, I guess. Um, but one of the things that I would like to, to encourage us in the moments of waiting and, and downloading and listening that uh, Randy's talking about and the transformation that comes from this, as Steve was mentioning, um, so many of the other things that you have all said, which have all been spot on, Remember that we're also part of a global community now. We have access to, to missionaries and to other brothers and sisters around the globe that may feel like they're isolated, they're alone, that this thing has got them hemmed in and they don't have anybody else that can reach out to them. And we're all connected. We all have people in different countries that um, are our friends, that are our coworkers in ministry, um, even in business. And I just want to encourage us to remember that we have a broader family than just right here on Zoom. And we can reach out to them. And just that word of encouragement, you may not have to say a lengthy prayer. You may just have a small scripture, just, hey, God's faithful. Trust in him. You'll get through this. And just them hearing your voice, do a little FaceTime or even just a text message. But that encouragement may be the very thing that keeps them in the game keeps them before the Lord, keeps them encouraged, keeps them strong, and keeps them hopeful for the new day. Brothers and sisters, I, I am grateful. I, I am blessed to be a part of this tonight. Thank you guys for doing this once again. And yeah, let's do it again. I got some other folks I'm going to have hooked up to that when you do it. All right. Thank you. You're welcome, Joe. Thank you so much. Give your love to, to our love to your, to your lovely wife. I Thank you, guys. Randy, would you close would us out with a prayer uh, blessing? Thank you so much. So, Father, your eyes are upon us. Father, you continually behold us. Lord, your word says that You've engraved us in the palm of your hands, and the walls of our life stand continually before you, God. Lord, as the hymn says, if your eye is on the sparrow, then your eye is watching over us. And Lord, we can find peace, and we can find refuge in that. And Lord, I pray, Father, just as the man prayed in the Bible, uh, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief, God. Uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit, wash away our unbelief, Father, our doubts, our fears. Lord, your perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. 
But God, you've not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Lord, I want to take this time to join with my brothers and sisters in a priestly prayer, God, um, the prayer that you have inspired in your word through the psalmist, through the priest, through Aaron and his sons. Lord, I pray right now for each person that hears my voice. The Lord bless you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you. The Lord give you perfect shalom and peace. The Lord prosper you. The Lord give you health. The Lord raise you up from any place of darkness, any place of trial and temptation, any place of sickness. Father, I speak over Keely in Jesus' name. Complete and total restoration of her immune system, Father God. Lord, that you would supernaturally, even at this very moment, breathe your spirit of life over her in Jesus' name, God. And there would be a new resurrection over her life, a new restoration for her and her family, God. They would not be in lack, but they will have plenty. Lord, I bless each of my brothers and sisters in Jesus' name, Father. And I pray that this is not a time of drought for them in any way, Lord God. It's not a time of famine. But, Lord, that you will feed them just as you brought the ravens to feed the prophet, Lord God, that you will take care of them. My God, you will supply all their need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And, Father, I pray your spirit of wisdom to be released over my brothers and sisters in Jesus' name, God. New downloads as they wait upon you as they're still and they know that you're God. Father, I pray for a greater capacity of the containment of your glory over their life, Father God, and that your glory will embolden who they are as salt and light, Father, it will embolden their very witness. And Lord, we pray for the, the wisdom of God and the spirit of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, Father God, to go forth and to be with our global leaders, Father, even our own president, Father, and his staff, Father. We pray for the scientists in the, the medical field, Lord God. Father, we pray in every sphere, Lord God, that influences the cultures of this world. The wisdom of the Lord, God, make your reign fall upon the just and the unjust alike in Jesus' name. Lord God, I, I ask you for an increased measure of this wisdom. And I pray, Father, that we can see this flowing as well in the, the world of the arts and entertainment, God that your spirit would fall, especially upon your children, Father God. And Lord, that they would be inspired and there would be fresh innovation and creativity. Lord, that there would be this ability to bring transcendence, God, to the people in the name of Jesus and in ways, Lord God, that are so multivaried, but yet, Lord, they're life-giving ways, life-giving channels of, of bringing heaven to earth, Father. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So God, we praise you for this time that we've been encouraged. And Lord, I pray right now, just a fresh breath of your Holy Spirit to come. God, bring peace, console any sense of anxieties or worries, Father God. No stress in Jesus' name, but perfect peace, God, perfect protection, God. Lord, we pray for those that are dealing right now with the virus, those who may come into contact with it. Lord, raise them up, God. Father, stop the plague in Jesus' name as we bring our incense before you. Father, there is a balm in Gilead, and that balm is Jesus Christ, who is the healer of this world. He's the healer of our all. God, save us, and we will be saved. Heal us and we will be healed. Father, that's your word and we cry out your word. God, grant this world your mercies, Lord God. You already have upon the cross, but God, we need you now, Lord God. We need a strong move of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, and there is a mighty spirit. So Lord, move, move, Father God, and move in us, Father. Lord, I believe there's gonna be a new commissioning out of all of this, Lord. Let us not be stagnant, but when you say go, God, let us be prepared. 
So again, thank you for this beautiful time together, Lord. And I just, Father, close this with your blessing in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Everybody, praise be to God. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, leaders, speakers. We appreciate um, just all of your contributions. And uh, let's just continue to be prayerful. I'm excited about what's going to continue to happen. And like I said, we'll, we'll more than likely do this again in the um, next week or two weeks. So God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Unto God be all glory and honor. Hallelujah. Bye-bye. Thank you. Love y'all. Yeah. Love you too. See you later. Yeah. yeah. Give those babies love, some love kisses. You. I'm going to yeah. need to. Did you see them? To... No, yes. I didn't. They made, it, they made a cameo literally like an hour ago because they didn't want to go to bed. They heard me up. And so they came in and said hi. But okay, I'm gonna, speaking. I can't think of I'm going to hit you up for a quick little FaceTime soon so I can see this. We'll plan it. Okay. Love y'all. Love you Take too. care. Love. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Love you all. Love you. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Bye, guys. Vincent, thank you so much, buddy. Love you guys. Thank you, Cynthia. Amazing. Really.